Guys, okay, before we start our presentation proper, we'd like to begin with an activity. Okay, so uh, if you see around you, uh, you will see some statements. So I would like you guys to get out of your seats to come forward to grab a, a bunch of stickers. Alright, and then if you agree or relate the statement, I would like you to stick a sticker onto the piece of paper. Okay? Carry on. <laughs> What? Stay. <laughs> no, I stay. It's okay. So after you have like looked through all the nice statements, then you can take a seat. guilty of making racist jokes to other races and having negative stereotypes of uh, other races other than our own. So um, this can be supported by a survey done by the Institute of Policy Studies which found that 50% of Singaporeans do not have a close friend of another race and 53% find it acceptable to make jokes about another race. This is an alarming statistic which points us towards the division between different races in Singapore. So if we look around us, we can see that most of us look like or are Chinese. According uh, to statistics, 74% of the Singapore population are Chinese. Uh, this, uh, therefore, it is inevitable that most of us will talk towards making friends with people from the same race as we share same values and cultures. So first, let's define what is casual racism. Casual racism is a form of racism that includes having negative stereotypes based on race, ethnicity, or colour. It can be in the form of jokes, comments, or simply excluding people from your conversation. So, uh, first let's look at uh, media stereotypes. In Singapore media, most main characters are acted out by a Chinese actor. And minority roles are usually stereotyped. Indian as construction workers or security guards, Malays as policemen or maids. Furthermore, um, native uh, essence are also exaggerated by uh, comedians to give them a comedic effect, as evident from the TV series The News. These give us negative stereotypes of minority groups and limit them towards certain occupations or the way they speak. Uh, last year, a Malay woman was denied a position in Prima Delhi simply because she was a Malay. This was the exact the department head's exact words. If a department head of a well-established shop is able is so oblivious towards his racist actions, our core values of meritocracy and racial harmony might soon become irrelevant. This is another example of an NS <coughs> business student expressing her struggles of being a Singaporean Indian minority. Individually, these comments may seem trivial and we may even be guilty of committing them. However, being constantly judged and attacked based on your skin color and race might lead to pent-up frustrations and emotional isolation, which might eventually lead to a breakdown. 
Some of us may feel she's being a little too sensitive. Well, that's exactly the problem. We should not feel, we should not have feel insecure about our place in society just because of our skin color or race, something that we cannot control. So what should we do? If we, if we see anyone uh, making a racist comment or we feel discriminated, it is our part to voice out and bring awareness to the issue to prevent it from being normalized. As the minor majority race, we should give minority groups the opportunity to speak up and also respect their opinions. Imagine if you were uh, the only Chinese in your school or the only Chinese in your workplace. How would you feel if other people spoke in a language that you did not understand? Or how would you feel if they constantly joke about our small eyes or our yellow skin? How would you want people to treat you? <coughs> if we become more sensible of what we say and also learn to empathize, uh, empathize on what, uh, how the minorities feel, we will become a more understanding society. Now I'll pass my time to Annette. We'll talk about the majority perspective on casual racism. Thank you. Okay, so today I'll be talking about why does the majority in Singapore condone this phenomenon and what are the detrimental effects of casual racism on a country's <coughs> in a country on a macro scale. So let me start off by telling a joke. This is a primary school's famous joke, which is there, were, there was a Chinese, a Eurasian, and an Indian man on a boat. So the Chinese man prayed to Buddha, he jumped off the boat, and he got saved. Then the Eurasian man prayed to God, he also got saved, but apparently the Indian man died because he had too many gods to pray to and he couldn't finish his prayer. So yes, this is like the primary school's most famous joke. Um, I'm sure based on the results, all of us must have made a racist comment before or laughed at a racist joke. But have we asked ourselves, why do we condone this behavior? Why do we think that um, making such remarks about a minority's culture or religion is okay? Well, the answer is humor. Sorry. Answer is humor. So humor is one of the biggest culprits for allowing us to condone such racist, uh, such discriminative remarks against the minorities because casual racism wears humor like it's facade. A Straits Times article stated that comedians, theatrical practitioners, and filmmakers have all agreed that the use of, stereo of racial stereotypes in comedy is par for the course and has been used for decades. Another famous Singaporean comedian, Kumar, stated that comedy without racial stereotypes is like nasi lemak without coconut milk. So basically what he's saying is that casual racism is the essence of humour and both are inseparable. With humour thrown into the mix, it often um, causes the severity of the matter to be reduced, such as being a casual racist or being an insensitive person. When comedians prize racial stereotypes as a way to garner laughter out of their audience, the audience will think that, hey, this is no longer a racist act. After all, we're only joking about Casual racism becomes a form of entertainment, and it is no longer seen as a marker of wider social issues that we need to target. Casual racism also can cause detrimental effects to a country's social structure and long-term cohesion in the long uh, on a macro scale, such as racial profiling. So, an ex a social experiment was done in the United States of America and it involved a group of school children having to associate traits such as intelligence and attitudes to dolls of varying skin tones. The results showed that positive traits were associated with dolls of lighter skin tones whereas negative traits were given to those of darker skin tones. So, when we assume someone's character based on their race, we are putting preconceived judgment onto them. And according to the American Psychological Association, we are causing psychological and social damage to one's self-esteem. Now, racial profiling can also cause can also skew the judgment of law enforcement and cause an entire race to be targeted. This is exemplified through the increasing use of violence, 
increasing use of violence against the black citizens in America. Yes, such extreme cases may not exist in Singapore. However, we are fooled if we think that the minorities do not feel any sense of discrimination at all. In a China News Asia poll, it stated that 30% of the minorities have felt that they were discriminated by the majority because of their race. And people actually agreed with statements such as they felt it, uh, the majority felt as if they were better than them just because um, they were Chinese. So, Racial profiling can infiltrate our judgment, and this may cause people in society to gain positions not solely based on their merit, but based on their skin color. This oppresses Singapore's social development and impedes progress regardless of... Regardless of... Race. And... Language. And... Religion. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, with all these consequences in mind, let us take a look at what the government has been doing and whether they can do some more. Alright, thanks Annette. Okay, so uh, so the government has been actively trying to unify the different races through various efforts. Uh, for one, there's the civics and moral education in schools, the ethnic integration policy which ensures a balanced racial mix in HDB estates, and even national service where men of different races come together to defend our nation. But we need to tackle the problem at the root cause. According to a CNA IPS survey, two thirds felt that discussion about race could offend others and cause tension. This forces me to draw the conclusion that there's some sort of unspoken rule about not talking about race if possible. So, so perhaps maybe it's because race has become a sensitive topic that we are not really wanting to discuss about it, or perhaps it could be due to a lack of open mindedness to others' views. So, where does this culture of fear come from? Well. Here we need to distinguish between racial tolerance and racial harmony. Racial tolerance refers to us putting out the status quo and without necessarily sympathizing or agreeing. Racial harmony, on the other hand, refers to us being respectful and mutually appreciative so as to form an inclusive and cohesive society. So the Singapore experience racial tolerance or racial harmony, I think this is something we need to ask ourselves. Prime Minister Lee Sin Long mentioned that racial and religious integration is an ongoing challenge. And the harmony that Singapore enjoys today is not natural but an act of will. He said it would be complacent and dangerous to be locked into a false sense of safety uh, to think that race is no longer divisive. And I think this is especially applicable to us as millennials um, who have yet to experience any ethnic conflict unlike our forefathers who experienced racial riots firsthand. So being the building blocks of our society, if we continue to let these stereotypes persist in our minds, how can we possibly progress as a multiracial and inclusive society that we claim to be? So, in order to, pre to reduce the racial divide and to prevent exclusivity among different races, we feel that there can be significant improvements in our education system. For once, race cannot be viewed as a taboo topic, and teachers must be empowered to facilitate such discussions in a classroom setting. If we are able to do so, we are able to empower our future leaders to communicate one another with respect and tactfulness. There also needs to be increased interactions with people of other races uh, in, in schools, especially like madrasas and special assistance plan schools where diversity can be sort of an issue. And um, this will help them to foster openness in their mutual interactions and will help them to broaden their perspectives. So one feasible suggestion uh, would be to pick up a third language such as Malay, Mandarin or Tamil, uh, which will help them to learn about other races through language. So how do we move on from here? Well. We know that racial stereotypes unfortunately reinforce our prejudice and we know that and this makes us uh, pass off seemingly funny remarks as socially acceptable. But however, we need to draw a fine line and track this fine line between racism and humour and we need to constantly remind ourselves not to be offensive towards others. So what's the main takeaway here? Well, okay, I took away some drinks okay, from the canteen. Okay, and I think though these drinks, they, though they look different, okay, though it's not as exquisite as a uh, mocktail, but I feel that, um, you know, that they encompass uh, the Singapore way of life, oh, sorry, it's encompass the Singapore way of life uh, very aptly. Sorry, I'm making a mess of the table. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and then do you want to help me? Okay. Yeah. I'm quite nervous, so, yeah. fine. <laughs> So 
basically you get the picture. Okay, that Singapore is that when we come when it comes to our local kopi uh, where 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 these drinks when these drinks come together, where conversations and food unite Singaporeans, I think these drinks really represent like how we should be treating other races as well. So the next time you bump into your Malay neighbor at the lift or maybe your Indian friend at school, perhaps you could you know, say hello, strike out a conversation, and you know, not let unf unfamiliarity hold you back. You no know, step out of your comfort zone. Thank you.